言うことは一つだけ絶対負けねえ How's it going, everybody? This is Nothing Excess with a new player analysis video here for the second part of the Fight Warriors in Blue Japan National Team transfer.、Uh, we've got six new players here. We've got Shun Nita, Hanji Urabe, Makoto Soda, Yuzo Morisaki, Hiroshi Jito, and Ryo Ishizaki. And so we're going to talk about them real quick. We're going to try to get through them、uh, pretty quickly.、Um, I think people are already kind of familiar with how the grading works, and I think I don't have to explain a whole lot of the things I'm writing. As I'm writing them anymore, so hopefully you guys will be able to follow along. Let's go. First off, we got Shunita, Sharp Sense, the pounce on the ball. I don't hate auto interception forwards, honestly. They serve an interesting niche in the format for Red Japan.、Uh, they kind of allow you to put a ton of pressure on the field in all sorts of areas. And in Red Japan, that's important because the closest thing Red has a, to a guaranteed goal scorer is an attacking midfielder that needs to get to the box. So he needs both forwards to enable, and that would be Junior Youth、uh, Red v o l u m i s a k i Imagine for a moment that you had a two top of 97 Nita and, eight, and 2018 Aoi. Imagine that these two players are chasing down the opponent's defense aggressively looking to collect the ball. Either of them can then give the ball to the better passer, usually 18 Aoi, to let junior youth Vali Misaki come up to the box and fire off his double diving header of death and destruction. Most people aren't going to see it that way. They will see the obvious problems with Nita. He's an intercept oriented character at the forward position who isn't a very good shooter, nor has a passive or hidden ability that helps him with shooting. 11.3k shot is nice, but it isn't that great unless you've got some buffs nowadays on the field. And he doesn't even come with a shot by default, you have to give him one. But that's because that's not the job Nita's really meant to do. Shooting with him is okay. Just make sure you chase opponents to death to make Junior Youth Vali Misaki do his job, and that's what he's really all about. And that is something he's really good at. Also, having access to Super Solidarity is awesome, and if you can get him for Super Solidarity, even if he all, all he has to do is sit on the bench, that is a win in my book. He is a forward. His roles are striker, although it's not his best. His real roles probably are utility and clogger. I think he's an A tier. Would I pull for him? Well, maybe it's really up to you. For his limit breaks, if you want to more or less maximize your pass cutting potential, also understand that you have to get to your opponents in a hurry. It's a limit break build for you.、Uh, do shot 25, power 25, 25 speed, and then 22 3 intercept technique. Now, if you've given up on the fact that Nita can in fact shoot the ball, then just go with this and go all in on getting the ball back from the opponent and enabling your incoming forwards and AMs. Specifically, junior, junior youth Vali Misaki, and have him do most of the dirty work for you. That would be a, the utility build, which is dribble tackle speed 16 16 18, pass intercept technique 17 17 16. For his grading, the only thing keeping him from being SS pressure is that he doesn't come built in with more speed. 6,095 isn't bad, but there are just so many fast players in the game right now that it feels kind of like a slight letdown. That said, his team skill and passive are both pretty monstrous, even if the passive feels a little awkward on a forward. He and Aoi as a two top would make life a living hell for opponents who are trying to get the ball forward from the defenders or from players who are trying to create offense from a kickoff. Now, you're going to see him and it's going to be like, oh, well, he's pretty actually pretty good all across the board. Why is he only an A? And it's because as an actual player, he's kind of limited and his enabling isn't good enough. And so for the things that he's actually meant to do, he's not actually as good as he should be. At the things that the position demands, and he's not good enough to change your mind, probably, that he could be a good replacement. Like, oh, I could be running a forward, but instead I'm running this guy, right? That kind of thing. And so, you know, scoring A, enabling A, defense A, because he can't really do anything other than pass cut.、Um, pressure S, though, because again, auto pass cutters do apply a lot of pressure on the field. He's very independent S. Flexibility, though, just A. Durability A. Skill support A and team skill and passive both double S. For his stats, he's got 914 stamina, and with all of his stats put together, you see he has 11.3k shot, 10.8k intercept, and 8.8k dribble, and 8.8k pass. Actually, really not that bad for a utility forward that can also shoot, but primarily you're going to be looking for him to enable, or, or you're going to build him in a way that he can in,、uh, like、cut and shoot. It really depends on you. Finally, for his skill build, he comes with S Falcon intercept. Uh, then you can give him the S. Actually, he also comes with S high speed dribble. You can give him S high speed running Falcon shot if you have a spare, then A Falcon pass and A high speed tackle. Tackle is just there to keep people honest because most of the time you're going to be using your interception to get the ball and then passing it back to the encroaching Misaki to send the entire game into a wild spiral of destruction once he hits the A double diving header. That's pretty much it for him. Next up, we've got Hanji Urabe, Spirited Aggressive Defense. Uh, we all love to make jokes about Urabe and how he's basically the lord of the game. We love to talk about how Lord Urabe will deliver us from the Bai Sokuni Kaiten through his powerful sliding block. We like to make all sorts of jokes like that, but they were normally just that jokes. Today, a version of Urabe was released that 
legitimately terrifies me. Besides the basic fact that he debuffs all non-Japanese opponents by 3%, which was a thing Japan didn't really need a whole lot more of, he also makes the entire defensive line stronger by just 1%, including the defensive midfielders on the field. If you put that together with 10.8k tackle, 8.8k block, and 8.1k intercept, that's already pretty decent for a utility defender with 1,046 stamina and okay skill support. If that wasn't enough, he also has tenacity as a passive, allowing him to really deplete his stamina before he's really considered to be gassed. But that's not the crazy part about him. The crazy part is what I'm going to refer to now, from now on, as a visitation from Lord Urabe. As long as you play Urabe with Ishizaki, one in every five matchups, Urabe will actually be the greatest version of himself or of anyone in the game. And I will refer to him from now on as Lord Urabe as his status and power demands. Being that he will be 77% stronger, he is the best at everything but shooting in the game in this mode. 13k pass, 14k dribble, 19.2k tackle, 15.7k block, 16.2k intercept. Lord Urabe descends and saves us all. He is a defending midfielder or a defender. His roles are defense, debuffer, and buffer. He also has this... He's only going to be the only person who gets this. It's just going to be called Henshin. It just means that he transforms. Occasionally, he transforms. He's an S tier. Would I pull for him? Yes. If you're red, you kind of want him. He is mad good if you're playing red. Combination Ishizaki, double S. So long as he's played with Ishizaki, every one in five matchups, he'll be 77% stronger in every single stat. That means that for the most part, you'll be an okay defender, but occasionally you'll be actively unbeatable and will be able to get the ball back no matter what. I have no idea how to define this, so the Henshin role is basically exclusive to Urabe, who can transform into Lord Urabe, deliverer of the tenacious lightning tackle, protector of all Japan. My team all stats plus one, rating A, an easy plus one percent to all defensive midfielders and defenders on your team with no restrictions or activation rates. It's nice, even if it's a little small. Finally, opponent stats minus three percent, uh, that's a double S. It's not hidden ability Schneider status, but a whole 3% debuff is really good, particularly in a defensive slot that you might have not thought of much of in the first place, and considering that Red has access to more of these, especially Red Japan. Finally, bumpy ground resistance, because of course. For Zombie Breaks, if you understand that you just want to be good in general and want to focus on tackling and maybe a little interception, it's probably the limit break you want to go with, which is tackle and cut, 25 all to tackle speed, intercept, and technique. If you want to be a bit more flexible, however, with your defense, you add a little block, Particularly if you have the S blocking skill from the blue version, that would be the balance defense. Uh, that would be tackle speed 25 and then block power 22 3, and so is intercept technique. For his grading, uh, requiring Ishizaki to be able to transform into Lord Urabe occasionally is the reason why his independence is only A. Meanwhile, he exerts pretty much average pressure throughout the game and is just otherwise a normal character, so long as you don't provoke him while Ishizaki is around into becoming the strongest player in the game in basically every category. He also doesn't have a lot of access to good skills, his skill support is worse than it has to be, and it makes it odd that he doesn't have some kind of unique Urabe style interception by now, as A and S forcible interception are both pretty weak. Uh, he is a B scorer, C enabler, but he is an A defender, an A pressure, and A independence. He has S flexibility because he can play at two positions, and frankly he does pretty well at either defensive midfielder position or as a side defender. He's pretty durable with an A, uh, he would be more durable if his skills weren't also expensive. Uh, his skill support is just a B. His hidden abilities, however, are an S. His team skill is an S. And his passive is also an S. Stamina has 1026, as you can see from his stats. 10.8k tackle, 8.8k block, and 9.1k dribble are paired up with a dribble that's 8k that he can't use. And the one thing that he does have a skill for, which is C precise pass, 7.5k. Can't really do much with that. C precise pass, not very good. Finally, for his skill build, he has S Tenacious Sliding Tackle, A Strong Pass, A Forcible Interception, and S Hot Blooded Block. There really aren't more than 4 skills for him, so just pick whichever one you'd most like to use. Many people might want to give him S Forcible Interception, that might be a good idea if there's eventually an easy way to farm it to 30 or so via League Coins. A Strong Tackle is also an option that might save stamina if you farmed it up during the Izawa Valentine's event. Uh, although getting it is a little annoying because you need, I think, the 2017 version. It is what it is. Next up, we have Makoto Soda, a flaming razor fighter. The second owner of Green Japan's Super Solidarity Passive is a guy who's a bit more replaceable on a team than Hyuga, but as a player themselves, they leave a little something to be desired. It wouldn't be too far to compare him to the Green 2018 Alberto, to be quite honest. He has great team skill and interesting passive, but functionally, not all that great on the field. He does have some decent enough stats with a 10.7k dribble and 10k tackle matched up with a 9k intercept, 9k pass, and 8k block. It actually makes a lot of sense as a total fullback rather than an outright defender. And you may really not feel that bad if you have the 18 Jito and Dreamfest Ishizaki shoring up the rest of the defense. Then you might look at the rest of his kit and realize there's something left to be desired, and it's because every single move Soda can do is actually kind of lackluster when it comes to skill momentums. Sure, he has an S Razor interception, but oh yeah, we forgot to mention it's 415 momentum. He has an S Razor tackle, but oh yeah, we forgot to mention it's 420 momentum. Dribble, 405. Pass, 420. It's going to be a lot of that, where they end in oh yeah, and you find out that they didn't really give him any strong skills. 
And what's worse is that none of those skills are generic enough to buy from, say, the leak shop, so all those S skills are hard to level. But he does have super solidarity, so that counts for something. For his position, he's a defender. His roles are defense and utility tier. Uh, give him an A. But would I pull for him? Eh, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, if you're a green, obviously you really want him, especially if you're green Japan. But if you're not, uh, and you know, you know he doesn't bring anything to like Rainbow Japan, for example. So just it's actually very, very, very defense. For his limit breaks, the first one is the more defensive minded of the two, assuming that you're not going to really lean into the fullback side of things and are comfortable using his base stats. You go tackle and cut, which is 25 all at the tackle speed intercept technique. But if you are going to be more offensive minded and you're going to be more of a fullback, assume that you will actually participate on offense with him and bring the ball up, or you at least want to get the ball out of the defensive side of things. You go utility, which is dribble, tackle speed, 16, 16, 18, pass intercept technique, 17, 17, 16. For his grading, you know, we got 4.6k shot, never going to score, it doesn't have to. Uh, he has 10k dribble and 9.1k pass, 10k tackle and 9k intercept, which makes for a good fullback to bring the ball up once you steal it from someone, uh, someone else who is either trying to dribble past you or swing the ball into one of the defenders. It's curious enough though that none of the players Green is getting have hidden ability evolutions because this soda was probably a prime candidate for one. It's really odd to see someone like Rob and Red get even more debuffs against non-Japanese players when Green has no debuff, skill, debuff skills, sorry, which is probably okay and way less buff skills, say, than Blue, which has a ton right now, especially in Blue and Blue Asia or Blue Japan. He'll be annoying to deal with once limit broken, especially considering that he'll give you a good bump of full power if he wins a matchup, and his great speed makes it easy to get into them and run from them. He definitely is, by the way, the new Torikago champion. Like, he's fast enough and he has good enough pass that he's going to be really good if you're trying to birdcage people out of a time. Uh, that is going to be very, very effective on him. He's great in F scoring, A enabling, a defense, B pressure, you know, he doesn't put a lot of pressure on the field, however, he's very independent, S independence, he's A for flexibility, really should probably be an S, uh, he has B durability, he doesn't have a whole lot of stamina, and his skills are a little expensive, but he does have S skill support, and his team skill is double S, and his passive is an S. As you can see for his stats, stamina is 957, that does also, his stats do translate to 10.7k in match dribble, 10k tackle, 9.1k pass, 9k intercept, pretty okay, nothing insane, but not bad. For his skill build, LS Razor Dash uh, is the, the dribble he comes with. Uh, if you can, actually, he comes with S Razor Pass, but you can the S Razor Tackle and the S Razor Interception. And for the last move, you know, whichever move you want to have a cheaper version of, give it to him as the fifth skill. He comes with Razor Interceptions, keep that if you want, but you can also go with Razor Pass and Razor Tackle. Alas, the only A dribble is Speed Dribble, and that dribble sucks, so don't teach him that. You can go with S Razor Block if you really want to, but it won't really stop anyone who is serious about shooting. He doesn't have that much block. Next up, we have Yuzo Morisaki, the super gutsy GK charms the world. This makes a third time in a row that, for the anniversary, Green gets a somewhat substandard goalkeeper. For 2017, Green Genzo was technically the best goalkeeper in the game, but he needed the SGGK catch from the Gacha Genzo to be good as he did not come with a good catching skill. Not six months later, they came out with a much better set of goalkeepers, uh, I specify here Japan because uh, they came out with a new set of goalkeepers almost immediately in Global which kind of sucked if you were green. And what green got was a version of Ken with huge stamina issues who was only comparable to 2017 Genzo. Meanwhile, 2018 Genzo and Mueller were definitely changing and defining the meta, and who needed to build in an ugly way to try and curb those stamina issues outright. It comes as no surprise then that Morisaki is kind of a letdown, but there's potential here despite K-Lab's insistence in trying to make green the hardest to play color in the game. First off, his main catch is awful and should never be leveled up. Second, if you're relying on him to be your main goalkeeper, you're in trouble. He's only good as a sub, and that's kind of devastating. That said, you do hit 75.3k with your best catch, the S SGGK Super Gutsy Catch. It's a nice number that's in between the best and worst scenarios for every top tier goalkeeper. So that's honestly not, honestly not bad. Although, wait, what's that? Oh, you mean you have to sacrifice a DC player to give him that, that catch? Have to go into the Dream Collection, pull him, and then sacrifice him? What, you didn't think K-Lab was going to make it easy for you, right? You're playing green, man. Come on. Chill. He is a goalkeeper. His role is a catcher, and he is a sub. Uh, his tier depends on when you play him. He is an S tier goalkeeper if you start, if you uh, sub him in, but he's only B tier if you start him. Would I pull for him? Eh, maybe if you're green and you need a backup goalkeeper, he's actually really, really good. Um, because 75.3k is actually better than Genzo's catch, like Dreamfest Genzo's catch against Japanese players. Uh, however, he's weaker than Genzo against non-Japanese players. But in that regard, that means that Yuzo's, uh, Morisaki's floor is 75.3k, and his ceiling is also 75.3k, right? Like, no matter what, he's always going to throw 75.3k as long as you max out his catch. And in that way, you could say that he is a more consistent player. Uh, 
except that you just have to put him in as a sub. So if he comes in as a sub, he's going to be really strong. You wouldn't, I wouldn't feel uncomfortable with him at the goal if he came in after Dreamfest Genzo got kind of exhausted. Uh, especially if I was playing against Japanese against a Japanese team. Uh, in fact, against a Japanese team, I might sub him in no matter what if I think I'm well enough in the lead and I think I can stifle them from shooting. Uh, because if they do get a, one or two shots off, he would actually be better than Dreamfest Genzo for those one or two shots. So there is that. For his limit breaks, if you're going to do a catching uh, limit break, uh, the stats are on screen here. Uh, his best catch, 75.6k. The best punch he can learn, which is the one from the free version, 54.8k. The, his current catch is not worth talking about, but the A version is 44.2k, and the A punch is 39.1k. And as a starter, as you can see, it's much weaker, almost 10k less for his catch, and so you really shouldn't uh, use him as a starter. Now, you can uh, do hybrid if you're really interested in it, uh, and I will always cover it because that's how, that's like my policy on goalkeepers now. We will talk about the hybrid uh, build, particularly if it's actually interesting. And in this case, it's not great, but it's not horrible, especially since the S punch is free and you can go get it, and it's not abysmal. Uh, his S catch drops to 74.74k, which is, uh, it feels a little harder on him because his S catch isn't that high in the first place. Uh, so the sacrifice feels more painful, but it does raise the S punch all the way to 60k. So if you're trying to avoid getting scored on by spam BS, it might be worth it. Uh, it drops the uh, A catch to 43.4k, and the A punch does increase to 42.9k. So there is that. Uh, you should all know by now the catching limit break is catch power technique 25s, and the hybrid uh, keeper limit break is 25 punch catch, and then 3193 for the remaining. So three speed, 19 power, three technique. For his grading, his main save isn't really all that bad, quite frankly. Uh, but you do, for that to actually happen, you have to go get the main save from somebody else. Uh, technically, if you use the one that he comes with, it sucks. But uh, anytime I grade these players, I'm not actually grading them on the skills they come with. I'm grading them on their optimal skills. Uh, if this was on the skills they came with, the main save would be like B. But we're talking about the actual maximum potential of the goalkeeper. In this case, even though he is a project goalkeeper in the same way that... 2017 Genzo, when he was released at the time, would have been double S, even though he needed the catch from somebody else. This is the same thing here. The main save isn't really all that bad, quite frankly, and because Hit Me Somewhere Please is actually pretty good as an A skill, he has plenty of spam defense. Problem lies in his stamina being kind of low for a goalkeeper, so he can only even really use four A punches before he's exhausted. Kind of a big problem. One cool thing about him is that he's actually really stable. The value of his save never changes when he enters the game. He doesn't counter anyone, and he isn't specifically countered by anyone. He just does his job consistently at 74 to 75k once he comes in as a sub. He just can't be a starter and that sucks if he's your only goalkeeper. It's possible to teach him the free S punch if you're willing to invest in it a bit. The AEX punch is a terrible idea to even consider so please don't consider it at all. He has an S main save, again like I explained, A spam defense, A independence, A flexibility. Uh, he's not very durable, he has got like C durability after two catches he's Gonzo. He's Gonzo. Uh, even though he has access to the A punch, that doesn't make him more durable. There's goalkeepers that are way more durable than this. Skill support B, you know, he doesn't have a lot of skills, although the skills that he does have access to are quite decent, so he's about right. His team skill S, you know, it's not crazy, it's not bad. And his passive B, you know, super sub actually works against him in this, in this aspect, in that he can't just be good to be good, he has to come into the sub, so. For his stats, 914 stamina, and as you can see his in-match stats, he's got 12k catch and 10.2k punch. Now if he comes in as a super sub, you will notice that the catch actually increased significantly to 13.8 and his punch is 11.7, really not that bad. For his skill build, he comes with S GGK catch, uh, but that one sucks, so teach him the S SG super gutsy GK catch. Uh, if you can, teach him the S hit me somewhere please, A GGK catch, and A hit me somewhere please also. If you don't want to give him the S version of his punch, particularly because you don't want to build him as a hybrid, remember the only cheap skill he has is C super punch. You could give him A all out save, but god that thing is awful. It's more annoying to come by than people give credit for the C Super Punch. Uh, and so you have to decide whether you really are interested in giving him that uh, that C catch, the C uh, all-out save. He'll do fine if, say, Dreamfest Genzo is finally depleted at the end of a full game and you're entering extra time, and that is actually really valuable for people in, say, the Dream Championship because he's low on team power impact, and that might let you sub in a stronger striker to actually try and win the whole thing. Next up, we've got Hiroshi Jito, proof of the Burning Man's strength. It's kind of weird seeing this Jito because he's blue and a World Youth Jito that is not specifically better than the current existing blue, Dream Fest, or World Youth Dream Collection, Jitos. That said, what he makes up for, and perhaps not being quite as good in terms of actually being good on the field, is in the features he brings to your team. And hell, he brings quite the nice set of features. 
And really, the most obvious one to start is that he's the second source of a blue Japanese super solidarity. Which is excellent if you're trying to build a Japan mixed team with Roberto and only a couple other pieces, like maybe an Owyren or a World Youth Japan Hino or a Gentile or a Mueller. On top of that, he has a nice S interception skill, the one that came on the limited 2018 version of Jito, which is a strong 475 intercept for 385 stamina. He also comes immediately installed with a power tackle, which is nice, in that you probably won't have to use a skill removal to give him power tackle if you have it at A80 somewhere else, uh, but he's not particularly great at tackling compared to other versions of Jito. Still, Super Solidarity is so good and he'll be so strong at 45% that it's probably just worth to go all in on it. He's 20% stronger during full power as well, which is nice, if not particularly useful all the time, and Jito has enough skill selection by now to be easy to build. Uh, but it's a shame how pitifully low his stamina is. Uh, for his position, he is a defender. His role is just defense. I actually think he's B tier. Uh, he's not as easily usable or flexible or good as a lot of other players you could be running, unfortunately. Even then, I might pull for him. If you are Blue Japan, you want Super Solidarity. Super Solidarity is worth pulling a B tier player for. Think about that for a second. For his limit breaks, uh, this uh, limit break... Primarily focus on you throwing your body around to intercept and block falls. This is the rare, oh, you didn't limit break speed, limit break for me. That's because this one's meant to sort of be played in defense stance and is meant to hold the center of the line as opposed to one of the sides. That's the block power intercept technique, all 25s build. And then there's also the previous limit break, but fast in case you really do want to have a little bit more speed, which will add some to your tackle, but primarily will make sure that you're not just stuck in one place on the field. And that's 25 speed, 2203 block power, and then 25 intercept and technique. For his grading, an interception Jito who guesses out fast and has no interception related passive feels pretty bad. He's pretty balanced defensively which contributes to the A rating there, but not being able to do much else makes it feel like he's going to languish on the bench rather than do much of anything else. The thing is you still want this guy on the field for stuff like the Tachibana Twins, particularly if you're running both blue ones, because both of them with S Skylab Twin Shot is some of the most brutal stuff any pair of forwards in this game can put out. Hugo also relies on him for Descending Raiju, which means that you might want to put up with him if you really need Super Solidarity to consolidate your team, because it runs a few off-archetype players, primarily Roberto. Scoring D, can't really score, can't really enable either as a C. He has pretty good defense, you know, A defense, doesn't put a lot of pressure, um, although because he is mostly interception, it's better than like a C pressure, I would say a B pressure. He is very independent though, S. He's also kind of flexible because you can play him uh, a couple different ways. He's not... Crazy flexible, but he's pretty flexible. Uh, he's not durable at all, however, and his skill support is good. Um, but the durability means that it doesn't matter what skills you kind of teach him, he's not going to be able to use many of them. Team skill double S, super solidarity is broken. And A for his passive, full power, pedal to the metal is... I mean, it is. It is what it is. For his actual stats, 880 stamina, again, abysmal. But as you can see for his stats, 10k intercept, 9.6k block, and 9k tackle. Pretty average. And we all know that he's good at high balls, so he does get like 12.5% there. For his skill build, uh, S, those little tricks ain't going to work is what he comes with. His intercept skill, and he comes with A power tackle and, and A high power block. You can give him the A strong pass and find him an A power double to get him. You'll never have enough stamina to really do anything because 880 is a very low number. You can't even use two S blocks with awful power, which is pretty bad. So give yourself a flexible kit so that you don't feel like absolute trash. There's really just nothing else to talk about with this guy. Uh, you're actually going to need to use a lot of A skills because otherwise you're going to gas yourself very quickly. You actually can't even use two S high power blocks, so teaching them to teaching them the S high power block feels awful. It's just better to give him like a high level A high power block and hope that that's enough to do the work that he needs to do. Finally, we have Ryo Shizaki, the ball focusing super guts. While he doesn't have the specialization of Dream Collection Ishizaki, what with being incredibly solid at both interception and blocking, what he instead is an incredible blocker with otherwise defensive, defensive backup skills, and makes your team absolutely miserable to deal with for several reasons. First, he doesn't really have to have great defensive stats to make an impact on opponent's offense, as he, from the start, debuffs your opponent's forwards by 3%. That's right, it doesn't matter who they are, where they're from, or what they did, as long as they debuff your opponent. They're debuffed by 3% flat, forwards just take the debuff, they can't do anything about it. Additionally, he also gives a 1% buff to every Japanese player on his team, which is already a pretty great swing when it comes to stats. As if that wasn't all, he actually buffs himself by 10% for playing with more Japanese players due to nationality link passive, which means that his 11.8k block, 8.4k tackle, and 8.2k intercept are actually quite a bit higher in practice, and don't forget that he buffs himself by 1%. As if to add insult to injury, he outright gives Tsubasa a 5% buff to his stats. Just like Takeshi is a support unit to Hyuga, Ishizaki is a support unit to Tsubasa. While he might not be as single-mindedly focused on making Tsubasa a beast like Takeshi makes Hyuga, he's 100% less random and is an incredibly solid defender. 
Another unit Blue Japan did not need, but they got anyway. His position is defender. He, his roles are defense, buffer, and debuffer. Uh, I almost gave him a double S, but he is not exactly there. Maybe in time I'll change my mind, but he is an S tier. He's an easy S tier, and yes, I would pull for him. Even Rainbow Teams actually value this Ishizaki. Uh, that actually might have been what should have made him double S tier, but Dreamfest Ishizaki is so crazy, and there's so many other defenders that he has to compete with that I think that it's actually kind of weird trying to find exactly whether you want to run him over some of your other defensive players. For his hidden abilities, he's got all stats plus 5%, just buff Subasa with no restrictions by 5%, please. Thanks and God bless. That's a double S easy. My team all stats plus 1. If you're Japanese, uh, you know, just get a 1% buff for no reason. Cool. Subasa, that means that means that Subasa actually gets a 6% buff. And he buffs himself 1% on top of his own passive. So that's real nice. That's an S. Easy S. Opponent stats minus 3%. It's not hidden ability Schneider status, but a whole 3% debuff is really good. It's just to opponent's forwards. Uh, it doesn't really matter where the forwards are from. It just it makes the forwards weaker. That's it. Boom. Just done. That's actually really good. Doesn't matter who you fight, they're debuff. You can make a really obnoxious Japanese debuff team right now. And it wouldn't be fun or interesting to fight against. But it wouldn't even matter that they can't get to like 45% base buff because you're hitting them with something like their forwards you're hitting them with something like 15 to 16 percent debuff and you're hitting the rest of the field with like 12 holy smokes rain puddle resistance c rating whatever don't get wet for limit breaks i call this limit break the outlet limit break basically it trades in some defensive capability and in interception for to hard focus on blocking and to give them a passing option out of defensive line do this if your defensive line is starving for options to get rid of the ball otherwise don't worry about it so the Outlet Defender is a 25 speed, 25 block, 25 power, and then 2203 pass technique. Some people might find this useful. You don't have to find it useful. This is just like, you think that the debuff on your opponents and all the other stuff that you're doing is enough to actually help you defend, that you invested in the past so that you could get the ball out a lot easier. Now, however, if you want a more traditional limit break that focuses on doing your blocking job as well as possible, then do this. It's a speed trade-off, but... Hopefully you don't get outrun by opponent forwards if they manage to pass the ball behind your defensive line into open space. It's a 25-25 block power and then the 2203 tackle speed and intercept technique build. Nice and classic, nice and easy. A lot of people like it, just do it. For his grading, I actually almost rate him in SS since it's so flexible and can fit very well in a Rainbow Japan team while also being very good for his Blue Japan team. I'd say it's arguable which of the two ratings he should actually get he's really that good. His actual defending is not as good as his actual defensive impact. Nerfing opponent forwards might be more valuable than him actually being good at defending against him. That's basically the theorem anyone will test when playing this guy. That said, with a ton of good skills and more stamina than he actually knows what to do with, this Shizaki, despite being technically lower tier than Akai and Misugi, is immensely more valuable to the teams that want him than Akai and Misugi are. This unit had gone super solidarity instead of Jito, he'd be an easy SS must own throw your drain balls away kind of player. Instead, he's just really, really, really good. D scoring, C enabling, things he doesn't really have to do, although if you do want to give someone again like a little bit of passing, then Ishizaki is not a terrible source for it. S defense, B pressure, actually doesn't apply that much pressure because he doesn't have any uh, active way, I mean like ways of actively applying pressure when he gets the ball, but he does weaken forward so I didn't know if I should have counted that um, because pressure is like the idea that him being around is a threat to losing the ball. And it isn't exactly, like, midfielders aren't worried about him in the same way that, for example, the Blue Pascal passing the ball over somebody, I mean, somebody passing the, uh, the ball over a South American player when Blue Pascal is on the field, that's a ton of pressure, right? He doesn't apply that same kind of pressure where you might just lose the ball randomly. But the debuff, I don't know. Well, I'll consider how I grade that more in the future. But for now, I think it's a B. Independent, so he's very independent, although having a passive that depends on other people to make him stronger does actually nerf that. Flexibility though, S, very flexible, different teams, he's very durable, double S, great skill support, double S, excellent hidden abilities, double S, good team skill, not the best, but good, and he has a good passive, so all around, it's just, like again, an easy S, arguably double S. For his uh, stats, 1,093 stamina, very nice, almost 1,100, that's great. 11.8k block, excellent, 8.4k tackle and 8.2k intercept, also excellent. As you can see, 7.9k pass could be made to be like a 9.4k pass after hidden a bit, I mean, after a limit break. Uh, so you gotta consider whether that is actually, like, actually it would be more like a, like, like a flat 9k, because it'll almost be like 1100. You gotta consider whether that's valuable or not. 
For a skill build, S new face block, what he comes with, excellent. Teach him the A forcible interception instead of uh, A determined intercept, which is not that good. Uh, forcible interception EX, obviously. And then A map pads, what he comes with as a passing skill. It's actually not horrible. It's not great, but it's not horrible. S face tackle, if you have a dupe of Dreamfest Ishizaki, you can give him that. Otherwise, you can give him like the A strong tackle if you have that leveled up. Or the S determined defense, if you're finally willing to get rid of that garbage high school Ishizaki. And then, if you have A golden trio lying around on a... On a on a character that you can just rip it off of skill removal and drop it here. Eh, you know, it's kind of there just for the memes. Uh, it will actually be useful though if you're like able to pop full power against a forward with no real defensive skills. And you may have limit broken the uh, pass. And so suddenly you're a little bit further up and you can drop the ball off to somebody who's better at doing the thing. I don't expect people to have a dupe face tackle really. So again, as determined defense or a strong tackle, we'll be okay in that slot instead. Now this like tackling skills are really that good. So don't feel too bad if you don't have one or two of them. Anyways guys, thank you all for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and click the like button and leave a comment telling me what you think of these players or of the video. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe and click the little bell icon to be notified of when new videos or posts are being made before checking out the rest of the channel. Also, please consider supporting this channel and my work by leaving a tip uh, on by clicking on the Streamlabs link in the description. Or you can join my Patreon where you can subscribe monthly and enjoy the unique benefits available to my Patreon subscribers. You can check that out by following the Patreon link below or using the URL shown in the video. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for checking this out. I hope to see you all soon. The mixer sucks.